explosion, bringing in vast quantities of sand that were poured into the flaming reactor. After the disaster, they were simply left here for fear of spreading contamination to the outside world. For the cats, they could provide the perfect place to spend the coming winter. They quickly become ship's cats. And if that means good luck, she may be able to leave her kittens here, warm and safe. Her time looking after the kittens is almost over. Soon she will have to leave them for good. They are the latest generation of feral cats born in the ghost town of Chernobyl, where year after year passes with only the seasons to make changes to the landscape. As summer finally comes to an end, the forest and its creatures start preparing for autumn, a time when thoughts turn to hibernation. The two bear brothers have had a good summer. They've eaten well, and they've grown in size. The forest streams provide the perfect place for them to bathe. Bears will sit like this for hours, but here they stir up the radioactive sediment and it sticks to their fur. And during the winter hibernation, they're exposed to more radiation as they move underground. As they excavate the earth to build their dens, they uncover the shallower soils where most of the radioactivity is still stored. Living here means there's really no end to the legacy of the disaster and won't be for centuries to come. It's a strange place to find such peaceful and natural balance. A balance that now includes the radiation itself. It migrates through water and wind and the levels of contamination in animals have varied over the years. While some radiation decays, it can also make its way through the food chain. Down by the banks of the river, the old boat is still home to the growing kittens. They're exploring more than ever. But as they venture out alone, they still seem to be getting themselves into more trouble. After escaping the clutches of the bears back in the old house, they're giving the two brothers another chance to catch them. They've just strayed into bear country. And this time, there's nowhere to run and hide. The bears are still looking for anything they can eat to store up fuel for the winter. Even a small cat would provide a valuable bit of protein. Yet again, the kittens make the wise decision to gain height. Their nine lives are fast running out. It's another valuable lesson learned. As winter sets in, and the temperature drops, the zone is transformed by a pure white blanket of snow. In contrast to the city, choked with vegetation, the forests of this exclusion zone are a spectacular and natural wilderness. But it's hard to accept that this is still a post-nuclear landscape. With the spontaneous resurrection of animal and plant life here, environmentalists have remained astonished by nature's ability to create something positive out of such a terrible disaster. But this natural balance might only be part of the story. The long-term effects of living somewhere so radioactive are a matter of debate there's still no agreement as to what diseases other than cancer exposure might cause. 
And there are fewer cases than expected. It appears the natural lifespans of animals here are too short to develop tumors. But the future of their genetic health will remain controversial for many years to come. Until then, we have the stories of creatures that are thriving here, like the cat family. The bows is now deep in snow, and the footprints leading away into the distance belong to the mother. She travels for some time on her own, moving faster now without her kittens. The journey has taken her far from the village and all the way to the border of the Forbidden Zone. As she crosses from the radioactive world that has always been her home, she leaves Chernobyl to encounter a new and alien world. The world inhabited by people. Back deep inside the zone, there's a change of ownership at the old house. The wolf has taken over this territory. Independent at last. He is now in control of the area the cats once held. settle down with his mate and it's here they'll bring a new generation of Chernobyl wolf cubs into the world meanwhile the cat has trekked further from her safety zone with the worst of the winter still to come she will need to find shelter somewhere safe from the elements and where she can still hunt. Suddenly there's an unfamiliar noise, an unnerving and bewildering sight. The world she's entered is full of dangers she would never have faced in her radioactive sanctuary. After struggling through deep snow for mile after mile, she finally sees the shape of something familiar. The house looks very like the one she's left behind, but there are signs that this one may not be empty. She may not know it yet, but this is going to be her new home. And unlike the one where she was born, this time the owner will come home. She's about to become a regular house cat. For a while, she sits and waits, wary of going inside. Hers is a story that tells us how nature can triumph, even where man has done his best to destroy it. It's a story that could have happened anywhere.